Welcome all uh, to my next tutorial on Athena. So in this video, we'll use Lambda function to query data in Athena. In my previous videos, we have already seen how to run queries from Athena console or from your local workspace with Java. And uh, in this video, we'll cover uh, running queries from Lambda functions. So I was working on uh, one of the project, uh, a data pipeline project, and uh, I encountered uh, one use case of firing Athena queries from Lambda function. So I thought of uh, sharing the same with you guys. Uh, by the way, you can see the AWS Community Builder logo on the top right corner. So I got selected as a Community Builder by the AWS. So this is the data pipeline that I worked on. In this video, I will show you the demo on this particular part, firing Athena queries from Lambda function. By the way, I'll cover each and every step of this data pipeline in my future videos. So don't forget to subscribe my channel. Let's start with the, the basic workflow. So first of all, I'll be using Python language uh, in my Lambda function. So I'm using Boto3 library. There are three particular methods that I have used in this uh, Lambda function. The first one is a start query execution, which triggers the query execution of your provided query. Uh, into the Athena. Then the last one is get query results. The first method will only trigger your query. You have to fetch the results using this get query results method. This middle one get query execution is optional. I'll tell you why exactly we need this thing. Let's move to AWS console. So I already have uh, one database, my database and one table water data. Uh, I have created one query. So this query returns as the 10 records from the water data table. Let me run this right now. I'll use the very same query in my Lambda function. So let's just move to Lambda console to create one Lambda function. Let's click create function. Function name can be I'll choose runtime as Python 3.8. Click on create function. My function is already created. First of all, I'll just go to the basic settings. I'll edit the timeout. Let's say this is uh, five minutes. I'll increase the memory to 512, which is a uh, configurable and I'll save my changes. Now I'll start writing the code. So now I'll copy my code uh, from here to PyCharm. I use PyCharm to develop uh, all my Python projects because um, uh, this is a smart ID, plus you don't get uh, auto completion in here in Amazon console. So it's better that uh, you write your Lambda code here, then you can copy paste uh, all your code into the Lambda console. So I imported the Boto3 library. Let's create Athena client. Let's call uh, first method start query execution. I hope you remember the workflow slide. So two methods you need to call start query execution, then get query results. So if you're not familiar with these methods, I'll share the Boto3 documentation. You can get to know about these methods in detail. Uh, inside that uh, the first parameter is query string. I'll copy the query from Athena console. Second one is query execution context. Here in you provide uh, the database uh, which you will be calling. In our case, data na database name is my database. You can always go to Athena console to verify your database. And the third uh, mandatory parameter is result configuration. Here you provide output location. 
you can provide the output location to copy the output location just go to the settings copy the path paste it here this is done for our uh, start query execution and uh, this start query execution returns you query execution id this query execution id can be get from response the last part is uh, to get the results you can call client dot get query results here you need to pass the query execution id yeah this is done now you can fetch the results one by one using for loop so before calling uh, get query result you need to sleep for the time which could be taken by your query for example let's say that uh, my query will take uh, 10 seconds to execute this statement then i should wait 10 seconds before calling the get query results i'll explain you why when you call start query execution your query execution status can be queued running successful failed or cancelled when you call start query execution all the queries are queued once the query is picked it goes to the running state and after running it goes to the successful or failed state and you can cancel the query at any time so when you call start query execution query goes to the queued state and if you call get query results immediately you'll get some error so it's better that you sleep here for uh, for the time which could be your query execution time so in my case i assume that my query would be completed in 10 seconds so what i'll do is i'll import time library and uh, i'll call time dot sleep let's say 20 second for a safer site this is it from my athena code uh, let me just copy this and paste in my console yeah let me deploy this let's click on uh, test for our lambda function and you can see that uh, my execution result is succeeded and uh, i i've uh, put print row here so it has printed 10 rows that i received from the query result let me tell you one more thing here uh, so we slept for 20 seconds before we called uh, get query results as i explained you earlier that uh, query execution status can be queued running succeeded failed or cancelled so if you want to know the current status of your query you can always uh, call get query execution here i want to print uh, response to is And I need to pass a query execution ID, which I already have. Query execution ID equals query execution ID. Okay. So from this response to, I can print here what is the current status. Response to, then uh, query execution then in query execution i want to get the status from status i want to get the state okay so if you want to get the documentation uh, go to boto3 i'll paste the link below and uh, get on to the query execution so you can see that uh, this returns as the dictionary and in query execution we need to go to the status and then get the state okay so this is done let me do it before calling the get query result and uh, after getting the results from uh, query both of the print statements uh, printed succeeded 
सो लेट मी डू इट बिफोर टाइम डॉट स्लीप लेट्स टेस्ट दिस नाउ सो नाउ वी शुड गेट वन प्रिंट रिजल्ट एज क्यूड एंड सेकेंड एज सक्सीडेड या यू कैन सी द फर्स्ट वन इज क्यूड बिकॉज वी पुट इट बिफोर टाइम डॉट स्लीप एंड सेकेंड वन इज सक्सीडेड बिकॉज वी डिड इट आफ्टर टाइम डॉट स्लीप while in using production environment because uh, i did it in my pipeline so i cannot use this time dot sleep because we don't know how many queries our production system is running so better thing to do here is you use a while loop and keep on checking the status if it is in queued state or running state then don't fire get query result if it is succeeded only then you call get query results this is it from uh, uh, this tutorial do try executing this lambda function uh, by commenting time dot sleep because in this way you'll feel the importance of uh, query execution states and you'll read that uh, you know with interest then this is it for now uh, subscribe my channel and uh, goodbye